Hey everybody, I'm Delicia, and thanks for stopping by for another weekly top five cigar picks. These are the cigars coming out of my humidor, hopefully making their way into your humidor for your week of smoking. So mix up of different cigars this week, some actually all fairly old. <laughs> I'm continuing in my journey of going through the humidor and just pulling out random cigars. And so pretty much, yeah, all five of these cigars have been in there for a little while. And I did include the links to all of these. So you should be able to find them a little bit easier in your journey of um, cigar smoking. So again, hopefully you start first looking at your brick and mortars and you can find these cigars there. And then if you can't, of course, you can use the links that I provided, which are all for online uh, cigar stores. I always like to stress to please try to support your local brick and mortars first. And then again, if not, then you can go to those different online sources. Um, but again, starting with number five this week, we have this lovely... Macanudo Maduro. So this little buddy has a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, a Mexican San Andres binder, Dominican Piloto Cubano for filler, and uh, Mexican San Andres mixed into the filler as well. So this one's gonna give you nice kind of dark cherry notes, peppers, you get a little bit of a bitter dark chocolate, um, a lighter oak, uh, there's a little bit of a mustiness to it, and then leather. So really a um, nice flavorful cigar from the Macanudo portfolio. Again, this one's been around for a little while. Moving on to number four, we have the Tatuaje. This is the Nuevitas Jibaro. Um, fun name, fun coloring. Um, I like the simplicity of this particular cigar. It has great flavor on it. it. has a little bit of a purposely unfinished, uh, maybe kind of like a quarter of an inch to the foot that is exposed so you can see the binder and the filler. Um, but other than that, it has the nice triple crown to the, um, to the head of the cigar. And again, a nice offering in the overall Tatuaje portfolio. I'm a huge fan of a lot of the cigars that he blends and I find them to be, for the most part, there's a good offering and a good price point. So um, I'm somebody that would grab if, you know, when all else fails, you always can see the, the red banded Tatuaje. I don't know the formal name to it, it's actually I just refer to it as the red banded tatuaje and it's an under $10 stick and that's a nice choice. This one um, also coming in at under $10 and this one just has a really nice flavor profile. This one has a vintage Corojo 99 for the wrapper, a Nicaraguan grown Cuban seed tobacco binder and filler. And this one's gonna give you more of an earthy kind of um, little hints of cocoa in there, um, leather, black pepper, you get that um, you kind of get that that nice little punch of spice, but then you also have a very beautiful kind of a creamy finish, almost a sweet cream on the finish. So this could pair with a number of things, but um, an example again of, uh, you know, a Cuban seed being grown in a different region. I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but on certain descriptions, you'll find that it's fairly common for a certain type of a seed to be grown in a different region. And I remember the first time I visited uh, my father's cigar factory, which is where these are made, um, there's a story about Don Pepin smuggling back um, Cuban seeds, you know, tobacco seeds in his wife's luggage. And, you know, it was a big to do. There's like a whole story that they tell about it, but it just kind of reminded me of that when I was reading the, the um, description of the blend, but just kind of funny, but again, those that just goes to show that not just the seed varietal, but the soil is such an influence on the flavor of these different regions and how they're grown and just all these different things that go into making these great cigars. But I just thought I'd share that really quick just because it caught my attention and I like to share that information as I can. Number three is this lovely Davidoff that I'm smoking here. This is the uh, Colorado Claro. So interesting color on the particular wrapper that they're using. Um, Davidoff is known to be very meticulous in their blending, in their growing, in all things Davidoff. <laughs> this one is no, um, no exception to that. So this one is featuring an Ecuadorian Connecticut sun-grown wrapper, a Dominican binder, and Domin Dominican on the filler. This is the special tea the Tola, so it's kind of like a tapered, starts off um, in a little torpedo and then it kind of has a wider foot to it, which I, 
wasn't thinking because I clipped it and started smoking it before I took a good picture. I'm sorry about that, but you can find them online. In fact, again, the links that I provided, you can see the whole beautiful shape to it. But again, this is um, grown in Ecuador. So it has a, a darker appearance for um, a Connecticut, if you will. Um, again, which is why it's given that name of that Colorado. Um, Colorado. So it's again, kind of like a, a darker Ecuadorian Connecticut shade. Um, wrapper which is actually it's a sun grown but in ecuador um i think i've mentioned this before but most of the time when you visit uh fields that are growing specifically connecticut for the use of wrapper you'll find them grown under a shade um, and in ecuador they have this beautiful natural cloud layer that kind of produces that same effect of the shade and so it allows it to have a lot of flavor and still provide that shade covering so it's a really neat process that that is found um, uniquely in Ecuador, which has made it a very popular place to have um, Connecticut seed um, grown there for the Connecticut wrapper. And um, yeah, so it's very flavorful. I rambled on on that one, sorry, <laughs> but it's very flavorful. And this is um, a nice offering from Davidoff. It is a pricier stick. So this one is gonna be on the 20 plus side of things. So again, if you're in the mood to spend a pretty penny on a Davidoff, um, this is uh, a decent way to go. It has good flavor to it. And um, I know there's a handful of you that are big Davidoff fans. So um, definitely, I'm sure you're familiar with this one as it's been around for a little while. And yeah, found this one in the humidor and it's smoking just beautifully. Moving along to number two, this one has been in the lineup, I think a couple months back. Uh, this is the Diamond Crown Maximus with this beautiful band and beautiful flavor. This one is featuring an Ecuadorian Ligero Oscuro Sun Grown wrapper, Dominican binder and Dominican filler. And this one's gonna run in the 13 to $14 range. Um, for the most part, there are some different Vitolas and again, depending on where you buy it, but that's around the price point that it should be at. This one's gonna give you the kind of roasted almond. You're gonna get some dark roast coffee, black pepper. You get a little bit of a kind of a caramel sweetness in the background. Um, to me, it's very weedy, like uh, bread kind of a wheat um, in the background of the you know overall notes. Again, these are just kind of subtleties that come into play but um, just a beautiful offering again from the Diamond Crown portfolio. And, mm, which brings me to number one. This one has become my morning, mid morning, early afternoon. Anytime I'm drinking coffee, this is like my go-to stick. This is the Sobre Mesa Brulee. It's beautiful um, just to look at and especially to smoke more importantly. Flavor profile is just amazing on this guy. It's an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper, uh, San Andres Negro on the binder, Nicaraguan filler. You get a buttery cream, you get a pecan kind of a nuttiness to it. Um, there's some earthiness in the background, definitely light roast coffee, caramel, cedar, goes great with coffee. Again, did I mention it's creamy? There's almost a sugary something um, in the overall mix of it. It's not sweetened um, artificially at all. It just has these beautiful, creamy, sweeter notes to it, which makes it an excellent treat for morning time especially. But again, you can smoke this all throughout the day. It's a wonderful offering. And I know you guys are familiar with this because I've had it in the lineup before and I talk about uh, Steve Saka very often. I'm a big fan of pretty much all his cigars. I am trying to think of, I always try and think of like, is there any that I didn't like? And I can't think of any that I've smoked of his that I did not like. Um, this one being more recently like the go-to for me. So a huge fan of this guy here. And hopefully you've had a chance to smoke it. And I hope you guys are having a great, or had a great weekend and are going into a wonderful week, staying safe and healthy, sane out there. Um, depending on what part of the world you live in, uh, there's all kinds of fun things still going on. But again, it's always nice to take a break, take a forced time out and enjoy a great cigar. So hopefully this lineup helps you for your week of smoking. And as always, thanks so much for tuning in and have a great rest of your day. Cheers.